<laughs> so here we are at the end of the 42nd ID conference, which took place in London. Good event, as always. Uh, very intimate event, from what I saw, um, with Mark Brooks. And I'm also with Tim Taylor. Tim Taylor. Uh, from FPD. Or F FDP. <laughs> F sorry. FDP, <laughs> which is Free Dating Platform. Right. <laughs> right. The, uh, yeah. Outside Trying to get it right. society. Before George Kidd gave the speech, the day before, was a pre-conference, which we added as a bonus uh, uh, for the entire industry, which included social discovery. And there were several sessions that took place on other industries, non-dating, on social discovery specifically. And what they were were panels of CEOs of whether it's apps. All right, so we covered games discovery, we covered music, we even covered taxi discovery and, and jobs. Uh, all different things, and it was very interesting to hear the CEOs' points of views uh, from problems that they deal with in their industry, and also they were showing things that were working and where things were going. The most outstanding thing that came out of that was live, uh, particularly music and entertainment. That uh, to make revenue, there were people who were willing to pay for live entertainment right then and there. So anyway, things that dealt with live video streaming. Uh, they, that was the direction where they were heading, including uh, music streaming as well, the live music. So that seemed to be the, the overall trend of what was interesting in the social discovery sphere. But uh, on the first day of the regular ID conference, uh, George Kidd from the Online Dating Association spoke about unity in the industry. And I know you were sitting there active taking notes. Uh, you missed the first day, correct? Yeah. That's so right. so uh, what, was, what was your take on that? Well, we've got 13 founder members at this stage. I think one key thing to mention is that adult dating sites are not part of the membership uh, just because they consider it rather a different sort of business, really. And uh, they've really um, made inroads on expanding it. 13 key members, including, I think it's eHarmony and Match.com. Uh, so I think now they'd like to possibly expand a little bit further uh, through to certainly continental Europe and USA. Um, but they're focused on, on the UK, and that's where they've had some success so far. Um, they've got the, what was the agreement, not the agreement, kind of the credo, really. They've got the, the standards which they've laid out. <clears throat> and uh, one, uh, one thing I asked them is, like, how are you actually maintain, how are you noticing if, if those standards are, are enforced? It's really kind of a, a reported thing from the membership and from uh, other people who are part of the ODA. So it's... it's it's a pretty light organization, but it's really what it stands for, and it's, it's really good to have someone who can be effective at talking um, with policymakers uh, about eye dating. So I think it's a good, it's a good group to buy into. Uh, it's got our ratification at this stage, and uh, we certainly recommend having a look at it. The other thing that I saw about George Kidd having speaking to him personally was that he is an online marketer, and that's his, his primary experience, and that's pretty rare to find for an association uh, head an association that someone knows online marketing or deals with online marketing on a daily basis. So uh, that that saves a lot of time in terms of learning things. Yeah. Well, and he's worked in other industries as well, so that, yeah. that helps us. It broadens out our um, it broadens out his capability in terms of getting the dating industry recognized and established in a, in a, in a good way. And then you spoke on the uh, state of the European dating industry. So what are the numbers? Well, for three hours solid, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> three hours. Oh, so no, 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 wait, 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 three hours. The pre-conference. The pre-conference. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about that. Oh, for I'm I state of okay. state of the game. Um, so wait a second. What was 45 minutes? You thought were three hours? It was a long day. It was a very long day. Long day yeah. I got into a time warp when I'm speaking. Mark. So we all live in dog years compared to you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. no, That's why I've not got grey hair. We're the dog years. <laughs> <laughs> no grey hair yet. <laughs> okay. So quick the numbers. Look at our numbers, right? Numbers. Numbers. numbers, like I've got more memorized. Numbers. <laughs> <Should we> memorize. <laughs> exactly, give presentation. Uh, well, look, Italy's up significantly. The, the big news, I think, is all the, all the desktop numbers are down significantly across Europe, uh, except for Italy, which is up 40% year over year for desktop mm -hmm. usage. The reason numbers are down is because everybody's moving to mobile, of course. Um, but things are Italy, up as mobile well. numbers are up in Italy, or...? Um, a desktop, actually, everywhere else are down on the order of 20% yeah. uh, across Europe, in, on average. And the reason for that is there's a landslide move towards mobile, yeah. right? Um, but Italy, I'm seeing on Comscore numbers here that Italy is up 40% year over year. And, and so it's, that, that is the growth market uh, story for the... In fact, they've got more people using internet dating in Italy than in, than in Spain at this stage. Um, 
yeah, so it's worthwhile taking a look at Italy. <laughs> I've been saying Spain and Italy are the growth market, and Greece, actually. Um, these are the, the final countries to really lift off with internet dating. Yeah. EU, mind, meanwhile, France, rather, is a very high penetration for internet dating, actually. They've got 5.2, it's the biggest internet dating market in Europe, 5.2 million uniques a month, compared to 2.3 million in, in the UK, so it's a far larger market. It's really twice as many. Really? Yeah. For the same it's a huge market. So we actually had Attractive World place. speak as well. So Attractive World said that it's about 150 million euro a year market in, in France, which seems a little bit low, really, but uh, they've got about 2,000 dating sites in France. <clears throat> as do we all, you know, all, all, most countries now have a long tail of um, not particularly well populated dating sites, a few mm. that are doing very well. Mm. Um, but Attractive World is interesting because they get rid of so many people. They've got 600,000 people uh, that have registered and be become members, but 1.6 million apply. So they're very, they're quite exclusive. Yeah. And they've turned a lot of people away, which probably drives them nuts and causes them to talk as well. <laughs> and it's like you're either in and you're talking about it, or you've been rejected and you're annoyed and you're talking about it, which drives more people to want to join. So it's quite genius, really. Um, their mar marketing metrics are very different because they, they're getting one in three ultimately, but they're getting word of mouth and it all works out in the end. <laughs> so Mashup comes about a billion dollars a year at the state worldwide, uh, should be on uh, just, just on the order of a billion dollars revenue and uh, dropping on the order of 20% to the bottom line, so very popular, <laughs> very profitable company and we hope they'll IPO sometime in the next few months and do us a lot of favour by helping generate more good, more uh, press and more attention on the industry and that will hopefully equate to more uh, VC and angel and investment money in the industry which will help generate some more innovation and startups. And Tinder of course coming through, driving everybody, uh, you know, taking a lot of market share from everybody else. So in terms of, out of curiosity, just in terms of mobile, the numbers that you get, do you get, when they say mobile, does that, obviously that includes phones and pads. Yes. Are they separating that now? No. I think that well, should be done. And the reason why is, you look at phones, it's hard to navigate well, for data. Anyway. And you look I'm at sure a pad, do. yeah, but I'm saying, you look at a pad, it's, it's really larger real yeah. estate. And you look at what Apple just released, now they have bigger pads, yeah, yeah. huge pads. So they're on the lines of like almost a desktop, if you will, it's just replacing a desktop. It's just it's just a larger screen. And that allows you- Different usage as well though, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, I mean your finger and stuff, lot, but but you have more real estate if you have a larger screen, and if you have even if you have something that's a flexible mobile design, mm -hmm. where you can you have a larger screen, so you have a flexible design, you can you can now put in more things there. Mm -hmm. Whereas the, the four and a half inch screens, I mean, there, there's limited things you can do. So the numbers yeah. for the UK: 1.6 million uniques a month on mobile uh, to match the comp sites, and 1.3 million to Plenty of Fish, and then 577,000 to Lavu, which comes in third. Thank, Thank you, Con School. You spoke with Angus Thody yeah. on basically uh, the free business dating model and how you're monetizing it in different ways. Yeah. So, like, there were a lot of things you put out there in information, but if you were to say like one or two big, big things out of that, what would they be? I mean, because there's a lot of information I remember you put out. The quick size got tricky, isn't it? If you are on <laughs> for, right. for premium sites, we're enabling uh, people to, we're enabling uh, dating site owners to create their own free sites. So rather than just drive traffic to their premium sites, they can create free sites whereby they can almost cre uh, create a walled garden for their free dating site members and promote their premium sites which are appropriate to, to their free to their free um, dating site. Members. And I remember that, and that just seemed kind of odd. It seemed like you were encouraging a paid dating site to shoot itself in the foot, and by doing so, it would get more money. Yeah, it does, because we're at the moment, if you have a premium site, you, you can only really drive traffic to that premium site. Mm -hmm. You can uh, monetize free site, but it's, uh, sorry, free traffic, but it's kind of difficult. So if you can provide another product for that free, uh, for that free member, um, generally people are trying free sites, they're trying it out. They don't necessarily know whether they want to carry on online dating or, or whether they just it's for them or whether it's not. So if we can give them an opportunity to try out dating, just as Tinder does with Match and just as Plenty of Fish does, um, then those, those guys can, can try it out. And if 
if it's not for them, then we've got other products or our partners have got other products. <laughs> so let's, let's extrapolate that for a second. Let's just sure. imagine that everybody does this. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a paid site and a free site. Yeah. Would that no longer work because everybody's just going to the free site? And if I don't like that free site, I'll go to the other free site. If I don't like that site, I'll just go to another free site. Well, it kind of, if you look at it in the premium uh, market already, that's how it works already. There are, there are thousands and thousands of niche sites mm -hmm. for a premium, on a premium basis. But there aren't really that many for free. I so if you actually thought it was actually increasing quite substantially. Lately. We're kind of, we're kind of con contributing to that, but generally there aren't really that many free sites out there okay. that, are, that, are, that uh, someone is able to, uh, to niche in, in a way that we can provide, we can enable people to. Okay. All right. Well. You don't seem convinced. I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure. I've always been, you know, I know we've had, I'm not going to discuss it in this video, the free versus paid and free versus paid. But when it becomes ubiquitous, you know, that's where, then what? You well, know, say for example, let's say someone, someone comes onto a site, uh, say a free site uh, that is fairly generic. We have uh, on, our, on our platform, for example, free California dating. So someone comes onto free California dating, and it's only for people from California, but it's 100% free. But inside there, those people that come into that, they can have a free dating experience if they want. But inside there is an opportunity for them to join a premium site right. that is specifically for California dating, or LA dating, or mature dating in California. Right. So, and in that respect, that hasn't happened before. So we're enabling partners to create that kind of niche for users. So users can have, if, if you're in California and you want any type of dating experience, then you can go from free to premium to, to premium. And we have an offer for you that is, that is catered for you. If the numbers add up, then I guess that's the case. You know, it works for you. I'm not going to debate it. <laughs> <laughs> so we also had CEO therapy, which we've done now for since 2009 or something like that. So we had basically new startups get up on stage and say, hey, this is their product or service for five minutes, and, and, and uh, this is their business strategy and, and their technology, and then we want to give them advice. And uh, the first one was Ben Lambert from Clot. So what was your, what was your take on that? Well, I had a bit of confusion with his name, and it's quite a, a rich mobile app. Yeah, so I, I think I critiqued him hard on the name just because I think every name needs to be something that's shoutable down a busy bar. If you actually communicate it past three people who are talking and get the person who's fourth down in the line to actually understand what you're doing, then you've got a good brand. Um, so he's oversubscribed on Cedars. He raised 120 grand on Cedars, but decided not to take and He's got 50 grand, which he got funded by in the end. So he's going it alone at the stage and um, looks like a nice app. Uh, and then we also have Pink Lobster Dating, which is a femme dating app which is focused on... Lesbian dating. Yeah, mm -hmm. lesbian dating. So uh, it kind of reminds me of Pink Silver, so really. but they've got a, a different focus. 60% of women are attracted to other women, was their mm -hmm. thesis. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite... Is really Is that across 30, the board or just in their... Across yeah. the board, 60% of women are attracted to other women. At some point in their life, was their quote, which is quite an eye-opener, so it's 2 billion women market worldwide. And they do a free photo shoot and makeover. I don't quite how the metrics can handle that. Yeah, that's that's very compelling, yeah, yeah, but yeah, probably do that scale. Mass basis. So we we'll, we'll take some. Well, I was going to say about Clocked. I I, um, I quite like Clocked. Oh, yeah, I, no, I, I like the guy, and I liked I liked the product. I, the, my my question was how how they were going to populate the database of it, really, and then how to monetize it. And that that thing is um, obviously that's a challenge for. Anybody who's got a new product. I, I, like, I agree with you in terms of clock. He was, he's definitely had a lot of energy. He definitely enjoyed his, his product and his company. I think they were trying to do more than they could. They, yeah. they were overcomplicating yeah. their product with more features yeah. and more things than they should at the beginning. Yeah. The other thing that actually came out of that was the price. I think he was £7.99, mm -hmm. pounds, mm -hmm. pounds per month. Mm -hmm. And some of the people in the room were like, hey, no, £30 pounds a month for what you're trying to offer. And other guys well, were like, no. <laughs> well, yeah, but I think that comes down to really, you've got to test that kind of thing. And yeah. In, and in order to test it, you've got to have a decent size of market. You need a database to start. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. All right, so Wayne May gave a uh, presentation, and actually it was a, sort of a live presentation where he went on Skype and he was showing actual um, uh, scammers online and, and their methods. And I saw that people were pretty interested in what he was showing them. There were a lot of things that, uh, in terms of the actual scammers, how they actually operate, 
uh, he was showing the actual methodology and, and what they do. And that was one of the first times he actually ever showed that. Uh, previously, he just talked about what they did. This time, he actually showed the actual process that the scammer goes through to, to, to uh, fake a profile on Skype uh, to make you think it's someone else. And then, I mean, at the same time, the other room was uh, uh, Dating Factory. Jennifer Gonzalez gave a fantastic presentation on the Nordic, Nordic market. Both of you guys were there. Um, yeah, I, I, I really liked Jenny. I mean, she, she really knows her stuff, and she's, she's really passionate about her products, and she's really passionate about the industry. And you could just tell from sitting with her, she really knows exactly what's going on in that, in that arena. Yeah, and again, I briefly walked in and out of the room, and I just saw data getting pounded to you every three yeah, yeah, seconds, yeah. you know, yeah. graph after graph. Yeah, she's great. What do you see? Scandinavia is a good market to focus on, and there are some significant challenges, especially in Finland, with the language, for example. She showed, actually, uh, the same words in Finnish, oh, yeah. meaning actually ten different, completely yeah. different things. So uh, I think this is why USA, American players have had a hard time entering Europe, because it is quite diverse. I mean, there are significant cultural challenges, and certainly in the case of Finland, they're compounded by the language challenges as well. Yeah. The part that I listened in then too, and may, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. I remember her, she was talking about Match's offices, that they have their offices in Sweden, mm -hmm. and that the Norway and Finland, they're changing. not as strong, that, that they, is Sweden, changing. they were stronger. In Scandinavian, is moving, yeah. Scandinavian offices are moving, uh, it's going to be handled from UK. The so rest of Europe worse, right? is being handled from music parents. So that's even worse, according to what she said, right? You've got to be there to, to really make a stronger impact, apparently. That's what, that's what I was getting at. I don't know about that. I think you need Finnish people to, uh, to guide a Finnish market entry mm -hmm. and a Finnish marketing. Yeah. Um, we don't need it to run it so much. I think that's something that can be uh, run centrally. And I think we'll see this over time, that you need to be sensitive to the culture, but you don't necessarily need to have an office in the, in the country. Mm. That's an inefficiency, I think. Mm. I think that was Jenny's point, that St. Match was based in Sweden, so it's a great product in Sweden, but it's not so great in Norway, because mm. it's not actually Norwegian centric. Mm. So also, right after Jenny was uh, uh, Max Sets Bernard from uh, IO Square, he came from France, talking about text analytics, mm. and big data on that. Uh, again, I missed that one, <laughs> so yeah. what would you hear? I, I really liked I really liked what uh, Max was talking about, and he focused pretty much on the. Uh, for me, he focused pretty much on the negative. So how to how to uh, sort out scammers and how to identify scammers. Sure. For me and for my platform, I'm looking. I'm interested in talking to Max on a much more positive um, conversation to see well how can we find how, how can we find in, te in the uh, text that people are talking in their profiles. How can we find relationships between them and other people on the platform? So in a much more positive way, because we've kind of... You know, we've, we've so sort of like identifying the real potential people that would convert to the yeah, premium. Yeah, because certainly from what Max was saying on the negative side of things, I say this, but I actually mean this. Right, right. But if you take that in the context of the positive, I say this, but I mean this. If we can work out a way of like, well, you're actually saying this, but you, know, you actually mean this, then potentially there are other people in our database that we can introduce you to. That's, that's for us a very exciting thing. So I was, I was quite taken with what Max was talking about. So they work with 20 different languages, and they say that they can meet, what was the step that he said, 90% of the problem with dealing with abuse and scammers, it can be solved to 99% accuracy, i.e. finding profiles that are just, just not good, that shouldn't be on the dating site. It's very challenges, challenging because we're using emojis. Our users are using emojis more often, and it is, uh, it's just tough to dig through that. There was an interesting suggestion from uh, one of the uh, newer companies in the audience, and what they do, uh, case in point, is they, they actually take the text, they strip out all the emojis, they make it lower case, they bunch the gaps that shouldn't be there, and run it, pass it against a uh, 10,000 word list um, to see if there's any matches. And, and to see if there's words that shouldn't be in there, and you kind of, that's kind of a, a hack, basically, but IO squared does more. Uh, they, somebody has asked in the room if there's any other company to do the same thing. There is actually Web Purify. That wasn't brought out, but there's another company um, that I know of that does that, and I'm sure there's more, but, but there's IO squared and Web Purify, game for our business. Mm. Okay. Mm. Kevin Gibbons spoke, but unfortunately, uh, the three of us were not in the room to hear him. Other people were, but, but not the three of us. Um, Lucas Zelesny spoke. Uh, he's a, a super affiliate, and he you knows a social media expert and um, SEO expert, and he gave a lot of different marketing strategies specifically for dating. And this guy's a no holds barred guy. Mm -hmm. So, what did you guys hear? 
My goodness, that was great. That was very intense. Yeah. Lots of good stuff in there. Uh, the big takeaway for me was something already new. You've got to monitor social media and respond to people who are kind enough to say nice things about you and otherwise. And the, the listing tools tend to be quite pricey. Uh, you know, DNA 13 and Meltwater. I mean, you can drop some t decent coin on these. But there's a few other ones that, are, that, are, that he brought out. Brand Tracking, Talk Walker, Brand 24. Uh, along with Fresh Web Explorer and Google Alerts. I was like, five. I was expecting one or two, but he gave us five to toy with. So I'm going to go play with those. Um, and a bunch of other tools. There's like there's so many tools in social media and kind of getting them, stitching them all together as a full-time job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> getting all these to work together. And I was like, listening for stuff and get one thing to post to another, using if this, then that, and then using Hootsuite yeah. and Crowdfire. My God, you can get really he's mired in all this. He likes, he's yeah. a tinkerer, isn't he? Yeah, he's a tinkerer, <laughs> big, massive, oh. little but, wheel system killer SEO yeah. monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Then we had a session on dating software, the big three private label uh, software providers there. And um, a few things came up. Payments and mobile were the two strongest. And interesting from where I sat was that in the audience, uh, dating Node sat in the audience. This is actually the first time Dating Node ever attended the event. I knew who they were for like two years. They were keeping a low profile. And they actually do private label mobile dating apps. And he doesn't want to take on more customers than he has. It's either 7 or 11 or something like that. And that's it. He's maxed out. And, you know, that was a real surprise that he was sitting there in the audience and here we were talking about mobile dating apps. Uh, you know how bullish I am about white labeling. I think ultimately, um, there's a, a, a mass of entrepreneurs that would like to start dating sites that never will be able to get a critical mass. And yet they have the ability to drive traffic. And now they have a full roster of choices of providers that can help them. Um, but it's good to know the nuances, the differences between them. And it really still seems that you've got Dating Factory, which is good for continental Europe, UK, growing in the USA, white label dating, no continental, because they're not foreign language, um, but strong in the UK. and encroaching on USA and Australia is a good market for them as well. And then uh, you've got uh, have people, Mike, Mike, who is good for the alternative lifestyle. Um, and it seems to make real inroads on that niche. So I think in a nutshell, that's how you choose between them. And that came out in the talk. One of the things that we were talking about is mobile innovation. It still is a tripping point for all these brands because it's just tough to do mobile for 10,000 websites. You're not going to send yeah. 10,000 apps to Apple, and, and that is an actual, that is a bit of a stickler really. So the key things are notifications, are they possible? Yes, yeah. but only in session. Uh, can you upload photographs? Yeah, I think you can do that now, that's not a problem, that's been okay for a while, but it's, we're talking HTML5. HTML5. Notifications are still a bit of a yeah. stickler, because they're going to be in app words. White Label alluded to having some solution and to this coming up. Was the other issue. Yeah, so here's the term. Payments. Slippery payments. Yeah, sure. Well, for me it was more like, a, I don't know if you've, if you've paid on off, for example, where it's right. literally if you have it on your on your iPhone and you, you want to upgrade, click on upgrade, it asks you for your thumbprint, thumbprint done, your page. Whereas um, with with a with a white label provider, obviously it's it's different from that. It, it's the user experience mm -hmm. is not as slippery or as frictionless as it is on POF or on, or on another app. Okay. So that's the kind of that's the challenge that these white label dating uh, providers have. But anyway, then we had Matteo Minari from BizUp, and I heard everybody was screaming about his sessions. So really, the big takeaway from that session was come up with the content. You know, engage your membership, and he pointed to OK Trends, which we've heard a lot about before, right? It's a great blog, yes. And actually, the inside track on that, by the way, is it took a Harvard grad a month for each post. I'm surprised they've not kept up with it, really. They did so incredibly well with it. But actually, news.ashleymadison has done better. And, and he did give, uh, uh, well, he made, also mentioned Pornhub.com Insights. No one would really, that, that's tough for them to get links coming in, but apparently they do did get a ridiculous number of links um, by being interesting, by doing real data analysis. Um, controversial with data-driven news. So that's what he really talked about. And a few tools and about getting PR around it. And really saying that, look, don't bother getting links these days unless they're the real McCoy. Earned media really does mean earned this today. You can't uh, put up dodgy links and pay for links. I mean, it doesn't work with Google anymore. They will spank you if you do that. Uh, now, I gave a talk on, on a different way of thinking in terms of getting the customer to promote your dating site. 
at the point of purchase. And so there was a little reluctance among some people in the, the industry. They were going, hey, wait a minute, no, people, there's a stigma about that. I'm like, that's my point. But if you offer them a free month in exchange mm -hmm. for posting on social media that you're yeah. using this service, mm -hmm. and if that's what it's worth to you, if it's worth, let's say, you know, 10 pounds or whatever it is, yeah. for that post, um, you know, we're, we're not necessarily talking Twitter, we're talking, let's say, LinkedIn or something. If, if that's worth that to you, and you get enough people to do that, that might increase your SEO. That's a Utail, right? That was, that was a Utail product, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what, what was the reaction to that? Uh, it was mixed. I mean, there were some mm -hmm. people like, wow, this is a different way of thinking. That's exactly what I wanted people to see. I didn't want them to look at a product. I want them to look at this thing from a different point of view of thinking about social promotion. Right. Not just social media, but social promotion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got it. I got them thinking. Some people were like, you're right, you're on the cell phone. So there's a good final panel. Uh, a diverse group within the room, combination of matchmakers and uh, and, and online dating uh, operators. And so uh, basically what I saw was that there was obviously clearly a disconnect between the two groups. Mm -hmm. They need to learn how to speak to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the matchmakers clearly have to start getting up there in terms of knowledge of some technical terms and in terms of uh, communicating with a lot of online dating operators, specifically for marketing. And if they don't get to that level, then it's going to be very hard to, to get this uh, uh, communication going. At the same point in time, uh, the online dating industry has to sort of step down, try and speak at their level in terms of uh, uh, less uh, technical skills so that they can, they can work together. There were, the matchmaking side, literally ready to just jump in now and, and, and spend money on things, which, yeah. which I've never seen them that hungry. Uh, so there definitely is a, a lot of lead gen opportunity. That's one of the things that I saw come out of it. I think we have to respect the amount of actual individual customer um, experience they have. Uh, they've got insight that which we which we don't. We've got insight, considerable marketing insight of group. You know, dealing with groups, but we do need to look into the uh, more detailed uh, individual cases to, to kind of get an idea of what we're missing. We're leaving money on the table. Uh, they're picking it up. Um, we don't understand their business. They don't understand ours. We need to talk more. Um, I think ultimately <clears throat> we can serve our users better by giving them more service. And that comes down to content, it comes down to guidance, it comes down to giving better feedback. And uh, I think that those are areas that matchmakers can help us with, and that we should embrace the best of the matchmakers out there and enable and bubble them up, yeah. um, and bring them on as partners in some cases. Um, yeah. I think that's the way to play with them, I think that's the way they should be encouraged to... Uh, I'd like to see a day when, when the best of these matchmakers are allowed to come onto our platforms, onto internet dating platforms, and say, look, here I am, I'm a matchmaker, here are some clients that, that's, you know, or not even said, just actually find some clients to, some internet daters, to go on dates with their users. And I, I think there's a great way, they will pay for that, um, and that's an early way to, to try that. The problem is there are, you know, there's, there's some very good matchmakers out there and some very green matchmakers. Uh, we need to distinguish between the two. I think we're making inroads on that. Yeah. Um, sure, we can do lead gen all day, and that pays. And what I suggested to the matchmakers is that they consider doing uh, an upfront. So kind of front load the deal, say, hey, let's do a 10 grand test. Here's the 10 grand, and here's what we need for a qualified lead. We need to have telephone numbers at work. We need to have um, uh, the numbers need to be pre qualified as being uh, real, and, and that makes for a decent lead. And then it's up to them to back it out to to work. You know, whether they're paying thirty bucks a lead uh, well, or more. Yeah, oh, yeah I, I didn't want to go on in that. Yeah. that, 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 that well, I, I, the whole thing was matchmaking. We all talked about Ashley Madison for a while. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I mean, my take was was I had a, a strategy that I thought would work if I was Ashley Madison. That seemed to be shot down pretty quick by everybody else. <laughs> do, you, do you agree with everyone else that I said just lay low for three months and then just go in with a hardcore marketing campaign and, and expect the company to rebound? No, I don't think they can rebound really. I think, okay. Certainly not with not not with the current structure of uh, what the what the company stands for and and who's running it. I, I don't think I, I can't see how one can rebound. Okay. And you you concur as well. Well, you know, people will still use them. People will still use them. Ultimately, they, they're an embarrassment to the dating industry. I think any, any site that does similar things is an embarrassment to the dating industry. These are short-term methods for making money. They will, you know, we are in a world where people talk more and reputation matters more and is more fluid. And, uh, and these sites will end up 
going down in time. They, they're I think not those kind of situations, but we did, I did also point out a vacuum had been created and that's going to be filled. In other words, that market demographic that is married people looking for other couples or other, other yeah. people who fool around with, that's, that yeah. vacuum is going to get filled. Yeah. And it's a very profitable market. We can't hide that. Yeah, but it was filled before and it will be filled up. Right. That's my point. But the next guy I'll just oh, I don't know. remember. I don't know. I think we had a lot of merits on regular dating sites. And that's, that's, that's what I mean. That is actually how AM has really helped the industry. Is yes. It's, it's they said go here clear. instead. If you want that, here's a place right. for it. If, if you want to have a, an experience with someone who isn't actually in a relationship, then you go to a regular dating site. Mm. We didn't have that before. It wasn't as clear. AM has actually done as a favor in that respect. They proved that that model worked. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is another site will come in or sites will come in and fill that void and they will market themselves purely as that way. I don't think, even if Match.com said tomorrow, hey, we're gonna have a division within Match just solely for married people, when you go in on a married site and you, you know that you could choose single, you're gonna choose single, you're gonna choose the lie, because if you choose married, then, then you're gonna get less, uh, less options. Mm -hmm. So th that's what that is. The other thing also was the sale of plenty of fish for the $575 million. Mm -hmm. and my argument was, I used an analysis from GE, that the, the, the purchase was prior to the IPO to show more revenue. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing is, there's not that much revenue for the amount of money they paid for it. Yeah. It's really taken that key question off the table that investors want to know, okay, plenty of fish, you worried about this? We've been, we've been hearing about this site. Is this, this should be a concern. It's free. They're growing crazy fast. Um, can they put your business out of business? And they, they, can, they can make serious inroads. They can take a lot of money off the table for a match. And I think they're really, the way to visit, to, to consider them now is they are part of the funnel. They're part of match.com's funnel and the uh, yeah. range of experiences and it's not a question that's on the table now for investors. Match owns it, there's nobody else out there that's anywhere near as big that's of any near a concern. Match has bought Date Hooker, they bought yeah. OKCupid and now they've sealed the deal by boarding plenty of, buying plenty of fish and, they and now they're with IPO and, and they have tenure. So Rings and roses. Yeah, I, I completely agree with Mark. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great thing for them and it, it just, all it does is really strengthen Dominance. Certainly their position, but also their, their, their story for their IPO, okay. which hopefully yeah, we will see later this year. Yeah, I expect great things from their IPO. I think they'll do very well with it. I think they'll be very well received. And they'll good for the industry. Yeah, absolutely. And, and everybody, for the investment. Everybody, the on the panel, too. everybody on the panel concurred that the industry from uh, the end of the, to the end of this year going forward into next year is up, 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 yeah. including you. Yes. Last year, I said no. Oh, definitely. Transition, but yeah. definitely. Well, it's certainly from that point of view as well. It's, it's on the end. Okay, great. So that's it. After this will be Miami in a couple of months, and uh, it'll be a great time. And... Thank you for listening, and see you in Miami. Yay! Very much. <laughs> see you in Miami. <laughs>